if you need to process credit cards through your Rails application, you should take a look at Stripe. Uh, it's easier to set up than any other payment gateway I've seen. And it's also very developer friendly. And the only fees you have to pay are the transaction fees, which are very reasonable. There's no monthly fees or other hidden costs. By the way, they're not paying me to say this. I've just been very impressed with them and I encourage you to try it out. Now, unfortunately, Stripe is only currently available in the US. So if you want to add it to your application, you'll need a US bank. However, international support is being worked on and hopefully will be added soon. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't have international customers. You can, it's just that as a seller, you need to be in the US. So let's see what's involved in adding Stripe to an application. Something that you may not know is that I grew up on a llama ranch, and I think we missed a big money-making opportunity back then of selling llama kisses. But better late than never, so let's make an application here for doing this. As you can see, I've already got most of the applications set up here, where we have various plans, and you can sign up for a given plan, which creates a new subscription. Right now, all you enter in is your email address, but what I would like to add are credit card fields here, but you can see, if I enter in my email address, it still makes a new subscription here. So I just need to make some way for the user to enter in their credit card information, and we can use Stripe for that. Now you can get started quickly by just going to stripe.com and then clicking on get started with Stripe, and then immediately you're able to process test transactions. So for example, you can run this command and that will create a test transaction for you. You can see there's the response and there's our test transaction. And to create an account, you just have to enter in your email address and password that you want to use. Save that. And there we go. And then if you check out your account section over here on the left side, you'll get information with your various keys that you'll need for uh, communicating with their REST API. Now Stripe also provides a Ruby gem to make it easier for you to communicate with the REST API. And you can just add that to your gem file here. It's just called Stripe and then run the bundle command to install it. And then you can set up Stripe inside of an initializer. So just go to your config initializers directory and then just add a new file here called stripe.rb. And then inside of here, we can specify our Stripe API key and then set that to the secret test key here. And so I'll just paste that in here. And while we're at it, let's also store the Stripe public key in here as well. And I'm storing it inside of a constant because it's not really needed for the Ruby gem, it's just needed in the view and the JavaScript. So we need to use the publishable test key right here. And I'll paste that in as well. Now you probably want to add this to your .gitignore file so that it's not included in your Git repository because it has sensitive information. You also want to use different keys on your production side so you don't want the same file over there. Now basically the way Stripe works is that when a user submits their credit card information, it goes directly to Stripe server and does not touch your application. This makes it a lot easier to get PCI compliance. Now notice all, all of these fields here, they don't contain a name attribute, which means when the form is submitted, they won't be included and passed in to your application. So the way this works is you include the Stripe.js file, and then you set the public key there, and then when the user submits the form, you need to create a token. So this you pass in the credit card information and you get a token back. So this is going to represent the user's credit card but in a token value. So the first step is to go into your application layout file and include the Stripe JavaScript. And you'll want to make sure to do this before your application specific JavaScript. And you may also want to make this conditional so it only shows up on the checkout pages. Now we also need to pass in our Stripe public key. And I'm going to do this in a similar way that Rails does its CSRF key, and that is using a meta tag. So let's make a new uh, tag here called meta and give it a name. Let's call it a Stripe key and then give it a content. Let's pass in our Stripe public key value that we specified in the initializer. Next, let's work on adding the credit card fields to this subscription form here. So here's what our new subscription template looks like. And right now I want to focus on the form fields, which are right here. So right now we just have the email address field and I want to add a few fields for the credit card. And I'm just going to paste these in to help speed things along. So here are three new fields, one for the credit card number, one for the security code, and we have the credit card expiration date. Now there are a few things worth noting here. 
One is that I'm using label tag and text field tag instead of going through the actual form builder because these aren't really attributes on our subscription model and I also don't want to even submit them to our application. So I'm specifying name as nil on each of these fields here. And I'm also using select month and select year here to handle the expiration date menus. And I'm specifying the ID manually here so that we don't have to mess with the one that Rails generates by default. So now when we reload this page here, you can see our credit card fields. And now what we want to do is when the user clicks the subscribe button, that it handles some JavaScript, submits the credit card information to Stripe, and then receives the token, and then submits that through the form. Now because this is a Rails 3.1 application, I'll be using CoffeeScript here, and I'll add it to our subscriptions CoffeeScript file. So the first step is to make sure our DOM is loaded by calling jQuery. Now the first step here is to set up Stripe by specifying the publishable key. And then we can set that to what we supplied in the meta tag in our layout file. So let's fetch the meta tag where the name is equal to the Stripe key. That's the name we provided and we'll fetch that content attribute on that uh, tag there. Now I'm going to handle the rest of the logic through an object called subscription. And I would normally do this through some kind of refactoring, but that's an episode in itself. So let's make a function on here called setup form. And so we'll make that subscription object with a setup form function here. So in here we want to fetch our uh, new subscription form. That's the default name that Rails will give it. And then we want to handle the submit callback so that we can change the behavior when the user clicks the button. So let's first disable the submit button. Let's look for an input type of submit and then call uh, attribute disabled and set it to true. And then we want to process the credit card. So I'll make a new function for that called process card. And then we want to return false so the form actually doesn't get submitted. So let's make that function process card. And for this, we need to prepare a credit card object, and the code will look something like this, where we are setting up a JavaScript object here with various attributes that Stripe expects and assigning the values to what the user typed in for each of those fields. And then next, we have the key called Stripe Create Token. And then for this, we have to pass in our credit card object. You can pass in an amount too if you want, but that's optional. And then we need to, a function to handle the Stripe response because it's asynchronous here. So what we can do is make a new function on our subscription called uh, handle Stripe response. And so I'll make that new function down here called handle Stripe response. And this accepts a couple arguments. One is the status code and one is the response object. Now, if the status is 200, then that means I succeeded. And then we can assign our response token, which is under response.id to a hidden field and then submit it through the form. But for now, let's just alert this value so that we can see what it is. And otherwise, if the status is not 200, then it failed. And then let's alert our response uh, error message here. So now let's try this out. Reload our page here, enter in a valid credit card number, security code, and expiration date. And then let's try clicking subscribe. And then we get back our token. But if we try this again and enter in an invalid credit card number, try to subscribe, we get back an error message saying your card is number is invalid. So now that we know this works, let's improve the case where there was an error message. So instead of displaying an alert dialog, let's um, add the text to a div. I'll make a div called uh, stripe error, and then just insert the text inside of there. Now I also want to re-enable the submit button that I disabled earlier. So I'll just paste this code in here and say disabled is false instead of true. So inside of our form template, I'll just paste in some code here to add that Stripe error div. And notice I'm also adding a no script tag so that um, if they don't have JavaScript enabled, it displays an error message for them. So let's try this out. Let's enter in an invalid credit card number, click subscribe. And instead of getting an alert dialog, we get a nice little error message down here. And notice I did add some styling off camera. And then we just need to handle the case where it succeeds. So instead of just displaying our token, let's add it to a hidden field in our form and then submit the form. So let's first add our hidden field here. And inside of our new form template, let's add a new hidden field. Let's call it um, Stripe Card Token. And then we also need to add that as a virtual attribute on our subscription model called Stripe Card Token.
And then back in our coffee script, instead of displaying the alert message, let's set the value of that subscription uh, Stripe card token hidden field. And we'll just set the value to the response ID, which will be that token. And then we just need to submit our new subscription form again. And we could do that by calling submit directly on the actual tag object, so that way it doesn't trigger this uh, on submit callback again. So now when the form gets submitted, it will trigger the subscriptions controller create action, and our token will be passed into our subscription object. Now we could handle the payment through a before create callback, but I don't like doing something that expensive in a callback. Instead, I prefer to do it more directly by making a method called save with payment on our subscription object here. So let's make that new method instead of the subscription model called save with payment. And then we want to first make sure that uh, our object is valid. And then we just need to use our Stripe Ruby gem here to make the payment. Now the API documentation for this Ruby gem is really nice. And one thing you can do is create a new charge with that card token that we have here. But we don't really want to do this because our card token we received is a one-time use token and if we just create a charge, we won't be able to make a recurring payment here. So instead, what we want to do is create a new customer by calling customer.create and then passing that card token in there. And that way we can also assign a plan to it and make it recurring. You can see we can assign a plan ID and Stripe will automatically handle the recurring payments for us. So to set this up, we need to go into our Stripe account and enter in some plans so it knows how to handle the recurring payments. So as you can see, I don't have any plans yet. If we go to our test account, uh, let me create some here off camera. And here we go. So here are the various plans to match those in our application. And notice I'm using the database ID for the identifier here. You might want to choose a different ID depending on how you have it set up. And then back in our application to handle the payment, we can create a new customer by calling stripe customer.create. We could pass in some various values in here, such as the description to provide their email address. And we have the uh, plan, which will be the plan ID of the subscription. And then we, we finally have our card token, which will be our stripe card token that gets passed in through the form. Now we also need to save this customer ID to the database so that we have record of it. So I'm going to create a new act attribute on our database called um, stripe customer token and pass in the customer ID here and then we can just save our model. So let's generate a migration for adding that column. Let's call it add um, stripe to subscription and then let's add a, a column on here called stripe customer token and make it a string column and then we can migrate our database so now let's try this out. I've entered a valid credit card number here. So let's click on subscribe. And in the background, it's going to uh, create the token and then create the customer. And then it says, thank you for subscribing. And then if we go to the Stripe dashboard, you can see that we now have a new payment, which is for $12, which will be a recurring payment and happen automatically every month. Now there is a chance that this Stripe customer create call will raise an exception if some of the information is invalid. Likely the case is that the user had JavaScript disabled and they tried to submit the form without the proper token. So it's a good idea to rescue from this kind of case with some code like this. Uh, it'll raise an invalid request error and then we can log the error message and then just add a little validation error and then show the form again. Now another case we need to handle better is when there's a validation error on fields that are unrelated to the credit card. For example, if we try to submit a subscription with no email address and a valid credit card, we'll receive a proper token from Stripe, but we'll, it'll take us back to this form with our email validation error. So what we should do in this case is hide the credit card fields because we already have our valid token. So we can accomplish this by going to our form here and adding a little if clause to see if our subscription Stripe token is present. And if it is, we'll say credit card has been provided. Otherwise, we'll display these fields here. So that way the credit card fields won't show up if the card uh, token has already been provided. Now we also need to update our coffee script so that it doesn't try to process the card again when the user submits the form in this case. So let's make sure that the credit card number field exists. Let's just say card number has a length. That means it exists. 
And then if it exists, then we want to process the card. Otherwise, let's just return true so that it continues on through the form. And we can see that by reloading this page here. And now only the email address will show up because that's an unrelated field to the credit cards. So let's try this out. Enter an email address and submit the form. And now because it already has a token, it's going to continue on with the subscription. And if we go to our Stripe account, you can see that that subscription was successfully created. Awesome. Now, one thing I haven't covered here is webhooks. This allows you to provide a callback URL which Stripe will trigger when a given event happens. For example, if there's a failed recurring payment, you'd probably want to suspend the user's subscription and let them know so that they can update their credit card information. And speaking of which, we need some way for them to update their card information, cancel their subscription, and so on. So there are a number of features that I haven't got to in this episode, but hopefully this will give you a good starting point. And that wraps up this episode on Stripe. It's an awesome way to process credit cards. Unfortunately, if you live outside the U.S., not available yet, but keep an eye on it because international support will be added soon. In the pro episode this week, I will build onto this application and show you how to add a PayPal checkout option to our subscription form here so the user can choose between either a credit card checkout or PayPal. To watch that episode, just point your browser to railscast.com pro and sign up for $9 a month and you'll also gain access to all other pro and revised episodes.